Hold on. Because this is... I talk about this in the book, that there's a young kid who asks his father, who's busy in life, working, working for Wall Street, top manager, but he finally comes home after uh, weeks of travel. And the kid, young kid says, father, do you mind taking us to the swimming pool, taking me to the swimming pool? And the father says, sure, son, I, I got you. We can go to the swimming pool. And the father goes in and grabs his newspaper like he always does and all his different information he takes. And they're on their way to the swimming pool. The son is excited to be with his father. They haven't had this much time in a long time. And while they're at the swimming pool, the father says, hey, son, you go ahead and you get in the pool. I'll be over here reading through the stocks exchange, doing what he does on a regular basis. And as the father's sitting there opening up his newspaper, he's reading through. The son is in there enjoying himself, having a great time. And about 30 minutes in, the pool erupts and frantic cries and everyone's running everywhere. The father drops down his newspaper. Everyone's evacuating the swimming pool and he's looking for his son all around and he noticed that his son is in the water drowning. And right as he noticed that his son is in the water drowning, he goes in and tries to jump and get in the pool and right then a lifeguard comes and pulls him. And as the father is fighting to go after his son to save his son, the lifeguard is looking at the father and he says, shh, I got him. And the father replies to the lifeguard, well, if you got him, why are you holding on to me? My son is drowning in the water. He says, shh, I got him. The lifeguard is steady looking at the son. He said, are you kidding me? The father is crying. I want to kill you. Get your hands off of me. He says, sir, I told you I got him. And right before the little boy is about to take his last breath underwater, the lifeguard throws the father to the side and goes in swimming to him as he's taught to do. And he pulls him out and puts the little boy on the side, compresses his chest one time and he spits out a little bit of water. The father runs over to the son and begins to hold him and hug him and say, why didn't you wait so long to go get him? Why didn't you get in when it, early? He said, sir, I saved him. He said, I'm taught that I had to wait till he was at his last breath, at his weakest point, that if I would have jumped in when he was at his strongest, he could have drowned me and him both. So that part of the story of my book shows that God, sometimes when you're feeling like you're at your weakest and you're down, the Bible said that God said that his strength and when you're in your weakness, his strength is made perfect. And that is a perfect illustrator of what a lifeguard truly is. When God is developing lifeguards, you first have to be in that position of weakness. You first have to know that, okay, I can't do it alone by myself. I too was in the position of drowning and someone came in and saved me. And in that part of life, it makes you the lifeguard. That you, can't, you pay little attention to those in the shallow but your time is invested to those who are willing to go into the deep. And you do whatever it is to go out there and to catch those. And what I want people to know through that story is that people would only understand a true lifeguard is when they're in situations of drowning or life is taking them under or things are going bad. It's not for everybody else to understand you. Those are the people that live in the shallow. Things are going their way. The water is beneath their feet are right on their foundation. They're winning. Everything's going well. But the lifeguard is sent for those that are trying to go out into the deep, trying to understand more about life. And it gets hard and it gets tough. But what you realize that when you're in those positions of life, that trials are coming, tribulations are coming, know that God always sends in a lifeguard to know that in your weakness, God's strength is always made perfect.